what's up guys welcome to star citizen or information related to star citizen i guess would be more accurate today we're going to be talking about game packages starter packages that kind of thing um you know basically what you buy when you first get the game so if you're thinking about getting star citizen this is probably pretty important to know basically i'm starting a beginner's guide series on my channel and when i was doing the first video we got to the section about game packages and i realized there was a lot to talk about so I figured it'd be best to put it in its own video so that's what we're doing so let's get into it so first things first obviously to get a game package you're going to need to visit robert space industries if you didn't know so robertspaceindustries.com you'll find yourself on this page and if you click play now it will take you to the current uh, options that RSI are pushing for starter packs so right now it's the Aurora MR starter pack and the 100 i starter pack but there's many more starter packs to be had so don't accept one of these two because you can go to the pledge store down here where it says for a complete selection of game packages visit our pledge store and this will take you straight to the pledge store if you're somewhere else on the website and you want to get to the pledge store just scroll to the top of the page and at the top you'll see pledge store on the top toolbar there if you click that it will take you to this the pledge store and you can navigate through here and look at ships, packages, upgrades, merch, subscriptions, all that kind of stuff. Feel free to check that out if you haven't already. But we're going to go ahead and click the complete selection to take us straight to the game packages. Again, you can find that in the pledge store if you're already there. So, first of all, let me put this price appropriate. Price appropriate? Um, relevance? I don't know. Put it so the cheapest ones at the top like this. If you want to just spend the minimum amount to get onto Star Citizen, that amount in dollars is $54. You never need to spend any more than that on this game. I've said it before, and I'm sure lots of other people have said it, uh, yet it's still a massive misconception with Star Citizen that you have to spend lots of money to play it or to enjoy it, and every time you want to ship, you have to buy it with real money. That is complete nonsense. You can get almost all ships that are currently flyable. You can get almost all of them in-game with in-game currency earned by doing in-game stuff. You don't need to spend any money, real money, on the pledge store um, once you've got a game package with your chosen ship. So when you buy one of these packages, yes, you get the game and you get a ship. So... $54 will get you either a game package with the Mustang Alpha as a starting ship or a game package with the Aurora MR as a starting ship. Right now, if you want my opinion, I would choose the Mustang Alpha. Bounty hunting, which isn't always PvP orientated, guys. In fact, mostly it isn't PvP orientated. Um, is a great way to make money pretty quickly, especially early game. In the verse the mustang alpha is very good especially at low level bounties uh, when compared to the aurora it's very nimble it's pretty quick um, it's got enough firepower to uh, take out a few of the uh, bounties especially the low level ones like i said and uh, that's all you're going to need to be able to get um, enough money under your or in your wallet to um, go ahead and rent another ship or buy another ship in game and if you can save up to get um a better light fighter or a medium fighter then you're going to be able to do higher level bounty missions and make more money and get a bigger ship a better ship a stronger ship whatever you want all without going on the pledge store and buying anything so i would recommend the mustang alpha the aurora um is okay i actually quite like the cockpit but the rest of the ship is pretty meh um, the only cool thing with it compared to the Mustang is that you have a little entrance way behind the pilot seat uh, where you could leave boxes for delivery missions. Um, I've personally said in the past that delivery missions are a good thing to be doing when you start the game. And I kind of stand by it in as much as it's a good way to learn to move around the verse, learn to take off and land, and just get used to again like being in the verse moving around the verse navigating that kind of stuff um, but as far as making money it's not great now don't get me wrong with the reputation in game now you can upgrade 
your reputation with the delivery factions and earn more money from doing the delivery missions but you're not gonna make as much money as quickly as you will from doing bounties so that's why I would take the Mustang out of these two options um, but you know it's up to you I think most people would tell you to take the Mustang though if you asked them now if you wanted to spend more than $54 if you was willing to spend you know an extra 10 or 20 quid there are other decent options available to you now the way to look at this because some people look at this as um, you know they're money grabbing or, or whatever they, they've got salty opinions should we say of the other game packages now the way I would explain it to people is for example if you take Call of Duty or FIFA or any other mainstream um, popular game around that you might pay say 50 60 quid for um, for the base game there's normally an option for example for an extra 10 or 15 quid on top of that 50 or 60 so let's say for 75 quid you'll get the game plus a season pass if you can hear that snorting in the background it's not me it's my dog I'm sorry but um, yeah for the 75 quid with FIFA say you might get um, some sort of package for some of the ultimate team or if it was Call of Duty you'll get the season pass thrown in for an extra few quid instead of just the base game uh, or you might get you know what's popular nowadays a battle pass of some sort so think of it like that if you was playing one of them games and lots of people do they would spend money to get a different edition of the game so with that being said for example um, I would personally recommend if you could stretch an extra uh, few quid the Avenger Titan for $84 um, a really good all-rounder ship especially early game it's got a little cargo hold in the back you can get cargo in it obviously and uh, you can do a little bit of trading with it not much but you can do something it's also stronger than the Mustang and the Aurora so you're gonna be able to do higher level bounties with it than you would do be able to with the other two options that we previously mentioned uh, I personally like the look of it some people might say it's bland um, I actually quite like it I've got a soft spot for the Avenger Titan I just I just, there's just something about it I couldn't even tell you what I just like the look of it like I said the main thing is it's a little bit more versatile than the other two ships and it's stronger you can see there you've got the hundred eye starter pack I really wouldn't recommend these guys um, yes they are really nice ships I actually really like the look of the hundred eye series of ships uh, but for 78 quid they're no real different to the Mustang and the Aurora um, they have got more room in the back of them so they're nice and you know they're, they're quite good for delivery missions if that's all you wanted to do yes you can do bounties with them the low level ones at least um, but I would rather have the Mustang if I went bounty hunting than the hundred eye in which case it makes $78 look not very good in my opinion you can also see on some of these it says war bond war bond is just a version of the ship or the um, item that you're buying in the pledge store which um, I think completely simplified just means uh, you have to buy it with pure cash you can't for example use store credit if you have store credit um, it has to be with actual new cash into your account kind of thing and also I think there's some sort of catch when doing buyback um, I don't know exactly what that is but it's not as simple as just buying back as if you bought a standalone or one of the normal game packages so um, that's what Warbond is you can also see if you scroll through a few other random ships like the Pisces there for example again the Pisces is a pretty cool ship um, it's probably actually on par with a Mustang for bounty hunting maybe it's probably about the same sort of all-round strength um, and it does have a small layer in the back like a little cargo hold $72 though I would just stick with one of the $54 options again if you go further down you will find for example the Anvil Arrow this ship is awesome but I wouldn't recommend buying it from the pledge store because it's pretty cheap and it won't take long to get it in game and uh, again you just use it for bounties and by the time you got up to the point where the Anvil Arrow would be better than the Mustang you could have earned the money with the Mustang to buy the arrow if that makes sense to you 
Um, so, and it's $108. I wouldn't recommend it because for an extra $30 on top of that price, if you was willing to pay that for the anvil arrow, you could buy a cutlass black, which can do um, almost all bounties, if not all tier of bounties. Um, it's a great all-arounder. Got a fairly decent sized cargo hold on it for a small medium-ish ship. Um, it can get almost all ground vehicles in it. Um, I say almost all because there's a f quite a few it won't get in there. But for example, all sort of buggy type um, vehicles, it will get in there. You can get a rock mining vehicle in there to go and do some mining in the rock vehicle. You can get the quad bikes and hover bikes, uh, quad bikes, <laughs> hover quad and other hover bikes in the back of it. Um, so it's good in that sense. It's got strong shields. It's got good um, offensive capabilities with its missiles and turrets and it's also got a manned turret so you could have a friend sat in your turret to give you extra firepower it's a great ship and most people in the verse have a soft spot for it and um, again like I think I mentioned earlier I eventually upgraded to a Cutlass Black from my starting package which was originally a Mustang I upgraded it to an Avenger Titan and I upgraded the Avenger Titan to a Cutlass Black over about six months i think i did that so again you don't even have to buy this all in one go you could buy a start pack 54 dollars with a mustang and then in a couple of weeks or a couple of months you could then upgrade it to the avenger titan for an extra um what's that 30 quid is that right my maths is bad uh yeah an extra 30 quid you could get the avenger titan and in another few months you could put on another few quid and get the cutlass black as an upgrade um but it's up to you you can see there the Nomad starter pack. Now, the reason I mentioned the Cutlass before the Nomad is because if I was going to spend $115 to get the Nomad, I would just wait until I had another few quid to get the Cutlass Black because it's much better, in my opinion. The Nomad looks cool. Um, it's uh, got a cool lift on the back that you can put your buggy on or your rock mining vehicle. It was really popular when it came out for rock mining. But... Um, it don't really do it for me. I don't think many people would recommend the Nomad over the Cutlass Black. Um, so that's why I mentioned the Cutlass Black over the Nomad. Uh, but the Nomad itself, yes, it's a pretty cool all-rounder. Although not as strong as... Probably not even as strong as the Avenger Titan, in all honesty. Uh, and certainly not as strong as the Cutlass Black. The Hornet is a really cool ship. Again, any sort of fighter you see in this list, I wouldn't bother buying it. Especially the Hornet for $150. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, and you can get some, you know, the Anvil Arrow, for example, is arguably better than the Hornet. Most people might suggest, although I've got to be honest, I prefer the Hornet just because it's a bit different. Do I? Well, I don't know. That's a tough call, actually, now I've said that. Mm, I'd have to think about that. Either way, point is, the Anvil Arrow is on par with the Hornet, if nothing else. And um, it's uh, they're both available in game for not much money. It won't take you long to get either of them. To, so to spend 150 quid on a Hornet is madness. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't recommend doing that. The Misc Freelancer is a good option if you've got 150 quid. If you wanted to go trading, maybe. Mm, I don't know. You can transfer or you can carry the same sort of vehicles as the Cutlass Black. And it's probably got a little bit extra storage. Um, it is a strong ship. It's a pretty good all-rounder. But again, $150. I'd rather spend the 138 and get the Cutlass Black. And you can see a picture here, guys. The Cutlass Black is, you know, it's the one to go for if you've got that kind of money. If you was thinking of spending anything over £100, I'd say. It's probably the Cutlass Black you'd want to go for. The Constellation Andromeda, £330. Look, if you've got money to throw away feel free the andromeda um is a great ship i actually had one myself for a little while um really like it massive well it fit, it's not a it's not one of the biggest ships in the game but it's a pretty big ship it's got a big lift on it you can get all vehicles all ground vehicles apart from the nova tank i believe fit on the connie's um uh, connie's is just the constellation obviously andromeda is just a version of the constellation um but all the constellations have the same lift i believe and uh, like i said all vehicles will fit on that lift minus the nova tank um the constellations also have a snub fighter that attaches to the back of them you do normally get 
Okay, you don't with this package. But with some of the other constellations, you will get a snub fighter that comes with the ship. That's pretty cool. Is it worth $330? I don't know. I wouldn't say so. Again, you can buy it in-game for not much grinding at all. And the UE Exploration 2950 is crazy. Now, if you're even looking at that, then I'm guessing you've got money. And why not? I ain't going to hold it against you. I've also had the Carrick, which is what that ship is there. And um, I love it. It's one of my favourite ships. I got rid of it because I didn't use it as much as I thought. And I decided that even in the future, I'm not going to use it as much as I thought I would. And um, yeah, I melted it into other stuff. But I mean, if you're even considering that, then you've probably got the money to mess around with things like this. So I can't tell you anything either way, really. Uh, it also comes with this package also does come with a freelancer, a terrapin, a Drake Dragonfly, which is a uh, is a hover bike. The Terrapin's like a little exploration ship. The Tumbler Cyclones are really good fun. They're ground buggies, which are great to ham around on moons and planets. And the Pisces, which is one of the ships we looked at earlier, um, which fits inside the Carrick. So um, that's pretty cool. But again, that's uh, quite crazy money. And I think these kind of packages and these kind of prices is what makes people think you have to spend loads of money on Star Citizen. Uh, which is unfortunate because it's not the case. And um, I think it's great these options are available for people that have that kind of spare money. You know, I, I do know people that have bought these packages. And, um, you know, let's just say they have a lot of time to play Star Citizen. And it's their main game. They don't really play anything else. Um, and they want to support the game. They want to be, um, you know, supreme backers, should we say. You know, they want to be a big part of the push for the game to be developed. Um, and I thank them for it because that's what's generating, you know, the, the funds to make this game. Whether, you know, no matter your opinion on the amount of money Star Citizen make, at the end of the day, that's what they're using to develop the game. You know, the... the direction of the game and what's going on with it's a whole different topic for another day which i probably won't even talk about in a video <laughs> but um you know it it's an option but you don't have to spend that so there you go guys like i said you can go right up to 1320 quid for these packages and there's much bigger packages you can buy if you look through the store which we won't talk about here but these are all the the game packages that you can select from the uh, starter packs kind of thing like I said, I mean, that's quite a few talking points in there, which is why I've made a separate video for it, because um, I decided it might be um, informative for some people going forward. So uh, if you are a new player and you're on a budget or you just want to dip your feet into Star Citizen, you don't need to spend any more than the $54. Um, you can buy the $54 game package and that will keep you happy for years. You'll never have to spend any more money on the game. You can generate your own in-game income and go ahead and buy like i said earlier all the ships that are currently flyable minus a few and armor weapons clothing everything uh, that's available in game you can buy it with in-game currency there's no need to spend anything extra on the pledge store so there you go guys i don't know how informative that is for people but i did want to just put the information out there if i've missed anything or if you feel i've got something wrong please do leave a comment down below i will not take offense as long as you're nice about it of course um you know it if i've missed something it's because i didn't know so if i didn't know i didn't know you know <laughs> i think that's a sentence anyway point is uh point it out to me so that I do know and I'm informed and also anyone watching the video can read the comment that you leave um, and uh, you know fill in any gaps I might have left and that will help them going forward but the bottom line is if you're looking to know which one to pick out of the two starter packages that I would recommend again it all comes down to opinions I would recommend the Mustang Alpha also in the comments if you're a veteran watching this to see what I had to say about it as well as correcting me or informing me on anything I might have missed, let me know which of the two starter packs, the base packages for $54, would you choose or did you pick if you was limited to only being able to choose between them two ships? You wasn't allowed to choose any other ship. It had to be the Mustang or the Aurora. Which one would you choose? 
so there we go guys i think that covers it so uh thanks for watching i hope it's informative and i'll catch you in the verse see you later